Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, anti-government protests erupt once again in Egypt, Facebook blocks accounts of activists days ahead of anti-pipeline campaign in Canada, seven killed in Colombia's 60th massacre this year, Sudanese delegation to meet US officials, terror list delisting to be discussed, and Iraqi stage massive protests against kidnappings and killings of activists. On Sunday, hundreds of Egyptians took to the streets in different cities and towns including Gaza and Suez asking the government of President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi to resign. The protests marked one year of similar protests, which were some of the largest in Egypt in years. The protesters responded to a call given by Muhammad Ali, a contractor and actor turned whistleblower who lives in self-imposed exile in Spain. He asked his social media followers to go out on September 20th to mark the anniversary of last year's protests. His videos on YouTube alleging corruption in the Sisi government were viewed millions of times and had led to popular demonstrations against the government for days in September 2019. The government crackdown on the protests last year led to the arrest of thousands of people across the country. The Abdul Fattah al-Sisi regime outlawed demonstrations since it came to power in a military coup in 2013 after deposing the democratically elected Mohamed Morsi. According to reports, Egyptian authorities had shut down cafes and arrested hundreds of people including some left intellectuals and activists on September 16 this year in anticipation of the protests. Security forces were also deployed at all crucial protest sites several days before the anniversary. The popular anger against al-Sisi's regime is rooted in the ongoing economic crisis in the country as well as the government's mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the pandemic began, the government has ordered the demolition of thousands of houses calling them illegal. Egypt has also recorded over 100,000 cases and registered more than 5,700 deaths. Between September 19th and 20th, in our second story, Facebook blocked dozens of accounts linked as co-hosts on an event page of an upcoming online campaign against the Coastal Gasling Project in support of the Wet'suwet'en tribe of Canada. The event was to target the US-based investment group KKR & Co, which became the majority funder of the CAD 6.6 .6 billion pipeline project, which is set to traverse through indigenous Wet'suwet'en land. Pages of more than a dozen indigenous and environmental organizations, along with accounts of many individuals, were reportedly targeted in the recent virtual crackdown by Facebook. All accounts, put through a three-day suspension, were either listed as hosts or were associated in other ways with the organizing of the social media campaign. According to Greenpeace USA, whose pages among the ones that were blocked, Facebook notified them of a three-day suspension in response to a supposed copyright infringement. Many others were reported to have been blocked without a proper explanation from the social media platform, the September 21st event was to target KKR & Co, with the communications blockaded by flooding their New York office with calls and emails, along with the social media blitzkrieg on Twitter and other platforms. The investment group acquired 65% of the stake in the pipeline project in December 2019. In our next story on Sunday, at least seven people were killed in a massacre in the municipality of Buenos Aires in the Department of Cauca in Colombia, according to reports by the Network of Life of Human Rights of Cauca. Bringing the total number of massacre victims to 35, this is the ninth one to occur in this department since the beginning of the year, according to the network. So far in September, there have been 11 massacres around Colombia. The Human Rights Network has put forward a demand that the government and the Attorney General take forward the investigation process with the aim of clarifying the facts. It has also demanded that the victims should not be stigmatized in order to justify the massacres. Social leaders have been among those targeted in violence in rural areas in the country. Former combatants of the demobilized guerrilla group FARC, who gave up their weapons following the 2016 peace accords with the government, have also been targeted in the violence. Young Colombians also mobilized in the street earlier this month in response to the torture and killing by the police of Javier Ordones in Bogota. The gruesome assault which was captured on video was widely seen and led to mass protests against police terror in the capital and in the country. Aggression by Ivan Duque's security forces towards the protesters has resulted in at least 13 deaths. In our next story, a high-level delegation led by the head of Sudan's ruling council has travelled to the UAE for separate talks with Emirati and US officials. According to reports, Sudan plans to take forward the discussion on its removal from the United States list of countries that supposedly sponsor terrorism. According to reports, General Abdul Fateh al-Burhan, head of the sovereign council that has been in charge following the overthrow of Omar al-Bashir last year, will hold talks with the UAE's leadership on, to quote, all regional issues that are related to Sudan. Reports also suggested that besides the terror delisting, Sudan's transitional government is asking for more than $3 billion in humanitarian assistance and budgetary aid in return for a deal with Israel. Al-Burhan had met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Uganda in a secret meeting in February. This was widely condemned 
by the Sudanese protesters who were responsible for the overthrow of the dictator al-Bashir last year. Since coming to power, Sudan's transitional government has been pushing to be taken off the US list. Its presence on the list makes the country ineligible for loans from international financial institutions and limits potential foreign investment. And finally, intense protests have taken place in the Iraqi city of Nasiriya in southern, the southern part of the country over the past two days over the repeated killings and kidnappings of human rights activists. The protesters demanded that the government bring the culprits to justice as well as make public the names of all those suspected. The protests, which began in the late hours of Saturday, continued over the next day and saw the protesters blocking the three main bridges in the city. Hundreds of protesters also gathered around and surrounded several government buildings, including the headquarters of the provincial government. Soon after the protests began, Iraqi security forces were deployed in massive numbers at the protest locations. The protests were sparked by yet another kidnapping, this time of Sajjad al-Iraqi, a prominent anti-establishment activist who was abducted by unidentified men late on Saturday. The kidnapped activist had in the past received multiple threats to his life. According to another fellow activist, Abdul Wahab al-Hamdani, al-Iraqi was a vocal critic of both the government and the various Islamist parties in the country. Following al-Iraqi's kidnapping, Iraqi social media users and other activists launched an online campaign to demand his release with the hashtag Freedom for Sajjad al-Iraqi. Iraq has witnessed course of kidnappings, murders and assassination attempts on human rights activists, civil rights activists and anti-government critics over the past one year since the protests began in the country on October 1st. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a